get out of hand last year. And really this year they're damned if they do turn out in force and they're damned if they don't. Difficult line, there's no question about that. And there are real problems to deal with. There's no question about that either. But the problem is whether they're overreacting. And what is also bothering me, is, and, and, and I'm not alone in this, is whether they're succumbing too much to political pressure. Because if you remember, not so long ago, they were much criticized for uh, when the Chinese leader, I forget his title, came to London of removing from his sight anything to do with Tibet and, and trampling on the rights of peaceful protest. Here they're clearly under pressure from the prime minister, who was, uh, I think, very over the top in his comments that were reported this morning, and even from the mayor of London, who's clearly worried about tourism. And I, I do wonder whether they've, they've overreacted in these circumstances. What sort of uh, police presence would have been acceptable to you? You, you can't give the specific number. I'm, more, I'm as much concerned, actually, about the, the, the tone and the kind of publicity that was given and the idea that everybody was told they're going to be confronted with heavy policing wherever they go. And the other thing is that partly to gain intelligence, but it also, I think, has a kind of intimidatory effect. Um, they've been filming everybody Luscott, going just, to various Mr. organizations. Mr. Luscott, I'm sorry, I have to butt in for the moment because the pictures that we're seeing from Oxford Circus, uh, we can see now that there is um, some trouble down there in Oxford Circus. Let's go over and join our correspondent, uh, Gita Guru Murthy, and uh, tell us what's going on there. Yes, I think, Dave, actually, if you do just go back to the, that very tight shot that we can see down there because we just heard um, a whole... We just heard a, a whole scream from the protesters. The police have been going in, taking weapons, it looks as though, from the protesters down there. Um, and there did seem to be a surge forward. And we can hear, I don't know if you can hear the actual protesters shout. You can certainly hear a noise, lots of noise coming from that central area. The police have obviously got the protesters hemmed in all the way through. We saw just a few minutes ago the protesters just throwing some sorts of, of of missiles or, or something into there, apparently maybe to try and provoke the police, and the police were going in and, and apparently taking things off them. The police, though, Gita, had clearly anticipated something like this, because in the past two hours, reinforcements have been pouring into Oxford Circus. That's right. There's been police vans and the mounted section going right in. If you can see from the pictures, in fact, the mounted section are not right at the front. They are just behind those police vans, which have around 10 officers with a, a sergeant at the top. Um, in each van, those reinforcements all backed up. And the police basically will be sitting here working out, really, how they contain this and keep tempers calm. It, it hasn't got too heated as yet, although I think in, in one part of Oxford Circus there was um, a, a, a bit more trouble. But um, the police, in a sense, can afford to sit tight. They've got the weather on their side because it is cold, it's wet, um, and they will now be looking to see how far they keep this calm as much as possible. And the mounted section um, will only go forward when they think um, things really are getting out of hand. And the indication that the mounted section at the back shows that at the moment they, they don't think there's any need for them to go too far forward. But obviously things are still quite volatile. Well, there was a bit of pushing and shoving going on there, wasn't there, Geeta? But it certainly looks as if uh, the police lines held, they've contained it. And apart from a few protesters jumping up and down there now, uh, it seems to have calmed down a bit. That's right, but certainly I think this protest seems to be very organised. We've seen even in other parts of London that the organisers seem to be on their mobile phones, very well organised. Someone that was just saying to me here that, of course, whilst all this is going on in Oxford Circus, you could be having what, what's sometimes termed cyber-terrorism with um, email systems and all the businesses around this area possibly being hacked into. And so perhaps businesses, even those in the BBC here, should be very careful about opening their emails and I can tell you that there are police right backed up right back down this street um, right below me I don't think you can see that but that will be the same case on all four sides of this central group of protesters so that the protesters are being kept in and, and the police in, the, in a sense can afford to sit and wait here for maybe two three four hours we were expecting this to build to its key point at about four o'clock that's what the protesters had said it seems to have built up slightly ahead of time and what we're now getting of course is people coming from all over the city to this central focal point okay Gita um, we'll leave it there with you for just a minute and we will of course uh, cross back to you if there are any more developments there in Oxford Circus we can see uh, the uh, protesters corralled there by lines of police officers. Let's um, just rejoin our guest in Oxford, who's Lawrence Lustgarten, and he's a specialist on the security services. 
Uh, you were, seemed to be critical earlier on about um, the density of the police operation, and yet it seems to be vindicated because there was a bit of pushing and shoving, and crucially, I suppose, it was nipped in the bud. Well, I'm not there, and I don't think you're there, and I don't really know what happened, but certainly the heavier and more visible the presence it is, the more difficult it is both for people who want legitimate, legitimately to protest to feel that they're being kind of overwhelmed, and um, also that may in some circumstances be provocative. It doesn't seem to be in this case, because from what your correspondent said, they're holding back and not going in particularly heavily, and that suggests that they're you know, behaving in a responsible fashion. Okay. But you know, I was asked initially, did I think that what is almost half the working capacity of the Met being present in this particular demonstration smacked of being a bit over, you know, over, uh, over the top, and I said I thought it was. How they behave, of course, is a separate question, and if they're well controlled, and if they behave in, in, in a kind of responsible fashion, and from what your correspondent was saying, the organizers are on their mobiles and they're trying to behave responsibly, then maybe things will go off well. There we must leave it. Lawrence Lewis Garten from Oxford, a specialist on the security services. Thanks for joining us. The uh, official figures show that so far there have been 14 arrests only. This is the word from Scotland Yard, maybe slightly out of date, but most of these arrests for possession of cannabis and offensive weapons. And uh, according to some reports, Westminster Bridge certainly was closed earlier. I'm not sure what the, it may be reopened later. We'll let you know as soon as we have any details. Meantime, let's get some business news. The world of capitalism continues yes, to revolve, it's, uh, Richard Griffiths. It's, revolv revolving, um, it's sort of revolving because trading's been fairly quiet in the city today, partly because of those protests. The big, uh in a very short space of time, we'll be going back to the May Day protest live in Oxford Circus, where the police are containing hundreds of protesters. First, let's take a look at the weather. Rainy in London, here's Peter Cockrell. Scuffles break out in central London as police try to hold May Day protesters back. Oxford Circus is sealed off. All exit roads have been blocked by police vans. Another Conservative MP makes an apology over comments on race. And family doctors hold a day of action to complain about their workload. This is BBC News 24. I'm Bill Turnbull. And I'm Liz Pike. Good afternoon. Several hundred May Day protesters have converged on Oxford Circus in central London. The demonstrators, waving banners and chanting, are surrounded by a heavy police cordon. Scotland Yard says 6,000 police officers are on duty across the capital, claiming they won't tolerate a repeat of the violent scenes that marred last year's May Day. But the organisers claim the police have overreacted. Today's demonstrations began at half past seven this morning with a slow bike ride from Marylebone and Liverpool Street stations. Events took place at more than a dozen locations across London. During the morning, campaigners held a protest outside McDonald's on King's Cross Station. They also organised what they described as a mass pigeon feeding at Trafalgar Square. Ben, at around two o'clock, that's earlier than expected, hundreds of demonstrators began to congregate on Oxford Circus for the culmination of the day of protest. And as we've been hearing, there have been scuffles in Oxford Circus. Our correspondent Robert Hall can give us a bird's eye view now over Oxford Circus. Uh, Robert, tell us what's happening down there. Well, we're a, yes, a very good view looking down on that crowd. Uh, Oxford Circus, of course, a, um, a natural arena for the protesters that have uh, moved here. They arrived here somewhat earlier than we were expecting. Uh, it was always billed as about four o'clock, this particular part of the day. Uh, they started moving off the largest group from uh, down at Pall Mall, just off Trafalgar Square, at about before, in fact, half past two this afternoon. If we look uh, up uh, Regent Street, up Upper Regent Street, towards Broadcasting House, you can see there another crowd a bit further down the street, and beyond them, the police vans and reinforcements. There are police in riot gear beginning to move up towards the crowd. Now, most of the time, this has been relatively good-natured, although we have seen one or two incidents of pushing and shoving at the police lines uh, just in one corner of what is, as you can see, a very large crowd. So at the moment, the police containment operation uh, appears to be working. You can see the huge number of uh, police vans, not only in uh, Regent Street and Oxford Street, but in the surrounding streets as well. Plenty of manpower on hand and all concentrated in one spot, which is uh, far easier for senior officers to coordinate. And reports suggesting now, Robert, that as many as uh, 3,000 protesters 
have converged down there on uh, Oxford Circus. Certainly uh, pretty well matched, as you've been telling us, by the police presence there. Um, and this contrasting with earlier reports that really not as many uh, protesters had been turning up as were expected uh, throughout the day. Absolutely, but I, I've been through demonstrations like this before. Um, it very often to us, very early in the day, looks as if the numbers haven't turned up. You've got to remember that uh, they based this around a monopoly board, which meant that by its very nature, there were sites scattered right across the city of London and, and the West End uh, with relatively small demonstrations, apart from the cyclists that up on the Euston Road uh, at the very beginning of the morning. So wh it wasn't until those groups began to come together that we got some indication of the overall numbers, and, and now we, uh, we're beginning to see them. And looking uh, when we were in there on the close shot, Robert, we could see uh, a policeman there talking to the demonstrators. This is very much part of the tactics, isn't it? Contain it, nip it in the bud, which is why that pushing and shoving, presumably earlier on, didn't get out of hand. Absolutely. I mean, you see, but there are a classic uh, moment there you just saw with the police lines. There's been quite a lot of, of goading uh, that we've seen missiles thrown, the placards that they've been carrying, uh, whatever they else was to hand being thrown at that police line, which isn't uh, terribly thick, but then the police have the comfort of knowing there's a lot more officers uh, behind ready to back up if the situation turns ugly. But there's been quite a lot of shake and fist. You might just be able to make out, once again, uh, some cheering and shouting going on down there now. Um, so the situation could change, but at the moment, as you say, contained. Robert Hall uh, up there with uh, the helicopter above Oxford Circus. Thanks very much. Let's uh, join now our correspondent, Geeta Guru Murphy, who's uh, got a good view of what's going on. Uh, she's on one of the buildings just above Oxford Circus. Uh, Geeta, what can you see? And tell us about the atmosphere there now. That's right. Well, I can tell you that if the camera just pulls back a little bit, you can see more police vans coming in from both sides down Regent Street. If you just pull back the camera, Dave, um, you can see more police vans coming from both sides um, to back up what the people already down there. And it, there has been a, a few waves of, of the temperatures clearly being raised. Um, and in the last few minutes, the police who've been just below us here have donned riot gear. They've got the round shield. They've got their helmets on. That certainly indicates um, some sort of escalation, certainly in, in, in their eyes. Um, and the numbers of police vans and cars and police on those bikes certainly is increasing all the time. You can probably hear above me the police helicopter. And, and it has seemed to be fairly good natured in a way the police are probably waiting to see there is a standoff position here, what the crowd does, the crowd perhaps goading the police as well to see how the police respond. Some missiles being thrown as we heard from Robert Hall a bit earlier. Um, and both sides really have got some time now to see where they take it. The police on the mountain section, I don't know if you can see just there, behind the police vans, they would only really go forward when things really started to escalate. That hasn't happened as yet. So really, although uh, the police sending out a very clear message there with the serried ranks and donning their riot gear, uh, apart from pushing and shoving, they've contained it pretty well. They have, but I, I can see from here as well that the police in the right gear do seem to be moving forward and there are more police coming out of the vans moving onto the street more police vans coming in actually at the back as well um, obviously coming further back up the street as well facing the opposite direction to the, to the view that you can see because there might be more protesters arriving from different parts of the city i've just seen an ambulance come forward as well of course that's obviously the emergency services taking all precautions um, it's very noisy here because we're just below the police helicopter but, but as I said, this position could remain like this for two, three or four hours. The weather is good. The police might think they will allow the protesters to maintain their position and sort of see how far they get, or see if they want to escalate it further. Gita Gurumurthy uh, for now from Oxford Circus, where reports suggest around 3,000 protesters have gathered, and there's been uh, some pushing and shoving, but the police seem to have it pretty much under control. Other demonstrations, of course, have been taking place around the capital today. Our reporter Ben McCarthy has been looking back at the day's events so far. This is now the scene this afternoon at Oxford Circus, the heart of one of London's main shopping areas. The demonstrators are now gathering in ever-growing numbers. A protest had been planned here for 4 o'clock this afternoon, but crowds began descending on the area two hours early. Police were soon on hand, scores of vans carrying reinforcements
queuing up behind lines of mounted officers. The situation, which has been calm all morning, is now growing more tense. In the past few minutes, missiles have been thrown and a line of police have struggled to contain a surge from the crowd. The first of the May Day protests at King's Cross Station in London was noisy but peaceful. Hundreds of cyclists converged on the area to demonstrate against the use of the car. They blocked off the main Euston Road for a while before moving on to another part of the capital. We're breaking into that story because we're going to take you live to Oxford Circus where um, the situation is deteriorating just a little bit. Uh, you can see here officers in riot gear with shields for some reason moving into, I think moving into the crowd in the centre of Oxford Circus. Quite why? isn't yet apparent. This is from our helicopter shot. They may have seen something in the middle of the crowd that they weren't very happy with and as a result they've formed a wedge to break into the crowd and deal with whatever it was that they didn't like the look of. Now you can see after that incident there have been one or two scuffles. The police with their riot shields backing off. There's a missile, there's another one, several more and uh, some very fierce remonstrating going on. At this point earlier, just a few minutes ago, there was a conversation going on between a senior police officer and one or two of the demonstrators. It may be that there's been some frustration on the part of the demonstrators that effectively they've been locked into Oxford Circus and not allowed to go any further and not allowed out either. And then something may have happened to spark this particular police action. Here you go again, you see the police moving in. Uh, quite what their motive is at this point juncture we don't know it may simply be that they've seen offensive weapons weapons and they want to deal with that or it may be they feel that the crowd is getting a bit too large and restive and they want to uh, guide them to another part of Oxford Circus but this is the sort of incident um, people were fearing might happen on the other hand it is relatively under control just a minor flashpoint compared with if you remember our coverage of last year's event uh, this is absolutely nothing when um, demonstrators took over Parliament Square and then effectively trashed a McDonald's restaurant. We've seen nothing like that today and the pictures we've just brought you have been the worst incident we've had so far today. Now let's talk to Geeta Guru Murphy who's got a different perspective on the incident. What have you been able to see of it Geeta? Well we can see the shot that you're looking at at the moment and I think what's happening is that the police have decided that they want to try and break up the crowd to a certain degree. The rain has just stopped um, they've still got daylight on their side and they might be thinking that um, if they go in and try and disperse them then they can try and section them off into smaller groups instead whilst they've got daylight and because they might have worried that with the rain stopping it might encourage the crowd and you might get more and more numbers here so that's why you've got this sudden um, escalation quite possibly instigated by the police still going on and we saw very clearly within a very um, few minutes the riot police put on their right gear, they went forward, the police in their normal uniforms went back and we can still see missiles being thrown and that standoff continuing. Yes, it's, it's hard really to make out at this juncture just what their motive is because usually, I remember from last year when they were trying to push the crowd back, they had a, officers on a horseback and then they had a, a, a cordon of uh, police vehicles which effectively made a, a moving wall moving very slowly up Whitehall, I don't know if you remember, and pushed the crowd in a certain direction that way. But that, on the other hand, it was a very different situation. They were moving into a larger area, namely Trafalgar Square at the far end and they had a slightly different way of, of dealing with it. Um, but, but this, has been, this is really, even given this little flashpoint, it's been 